Hello and welcome everyone to this edition of Insights from the PM's Desk. I'm Justin Pluff, Deputy Chief Investment Officer for Global Credit at Carlisle. So as we usually do, I want to start with some comments on the macro environment and really make two points. One is that the consumer remains strong. And this is generally because of the savings that was built up during the COVID fiscal stimulus. The second point is that inflation is starting to abate. We've seen that over the last few months and all of our trend lines continue to show inflation abating as we head into the new year. So let's start with the consumer. We saw good spending in the holiday period. Uh, you would expect this in an inflationary environment, but any signs that the consumer was really suffering uh, are not shown in any of this data. And, and that's a, a good sign for the US economy. Um, there are a couple of things we're watching. One is that that savings rate that was so high during the pandemic has come down significantly. And you can see that on the right side of this slide. The other is that uh, loan delinquencies are starting to come up. So a strong consumer today, but a couple of concerning trends that we're going to watch as we head into the new year. From an inflationary perspective, a durable goods spending is now back in line with capacity, and we're starting to see services spending creep up. Both of those things, uh, generally speaking, uh, good signs for a more normalized inflationary environment. There are a number of metrics that we've tracked in prior presentations. All of them are suggesting more normalized inflation. Here you see the cost of container shipping continues to go down significantly. Uh, we're also seeing the cost of used cars, which spiked last year, uh, starting to come back down towards trend line. And then in real estate, rents spiked significantly. They're now coming back down closer to the economics of ownership. All of these trends, good for inflation. Now, the Fed has continued to hike, most recently 50 basis points, and we are now at the peak of the chart that you see on the right there, suggesting that recession in 2023 is uh, very, very likely to happen. Now, the depth of the recession, we can argue about that, uh, but our data suggests that some sort of recession is very likely next year. So how are the private credit markets reacting today? Well, first of all, interest coverage ratios are down. Now, I will note that to be between three and three and a half percent is not well outside historical norms, but the trend is certainly down. And the reason for that is simple. With the hike in rates, you've seen base rates uh, go up significantly. We track LIBOR on, on the bottom of this chart, and all of that interest uh, expense is causing uh, companies to have to deal with just higher cost of borrowing. When you have interest coverage ratios going down, what you worry about is default rates. And default rates have been extremely low. You can see on the left side of the slide, uh, below 1% today versus the historical average of around 2.7%. Next year, just about every single market participant believes that default rates are going to rise. The question is just by how much. Now, on average, uh, market participants think that we might hit 4% uh, in default terms. And to give some context, that's nowhere near the 10% that we hit during the great financial crisis and not even the 6% that we had for a couple of years in the dot-com bubble. So 4%, while it's higher than historical averages and much higher than recent history, is not really out of the realm of, of what we've seen in our markets historically. A bit of good news for our markets is that there really is no maturity wall to deal with over the next few years. Companies have been very good about extending out the maturities of their debt, giving themselves 2023, 24, and 25 to really work through any issues that come up. Uh, we think this should preserve value for companies in the private markets, but also give private lenders like ourselves the opportunity to restructure loans and preserve value and perhaps make great new investments at good entry points. So now let's talk about how we're investing at Carlisle Global Credit. Well, first of all, we're getting paid more to invest in just about every single area we see across the universe of private credit. You can see just about every trend line up. The one that's a little bit flat is direct lending, which is, has lagged a little bit in the rest of the private credit universe. Uh, but as you know, we try to allocate tactically across that universe to go where we see the best value. One of the areas where we are finding uh, the most opportunity is in transitional capital. This is capital that companies need outside the regular course of business uh, to fund things like transformative growth or acquisitions. And they're things that 
Generally speaking, banks or regular way direct lenders aren't well suited to lend to. That's because you need expertise in capital structures. You need to understand the needs of a particular company and really create a bespoke capital solution for them. At Carlisle, uh, we lean into these opportunities. We think it's a great way for us to invest because we have that expertise in capital structures. We have that expertise across many different industry segments. And this is an area where we really can capture that premium for illiquidity and complexity. So what's an example of this? Well, recently, Nielsen, a company you probably all know as a TV audience measurement and data analytics provider, it went through a transitional moment. It went from a public company to being taken private by a couple of sponsors. Now, you've probably seen in the news uh, there was significant market leverage loan for this, but there was also a private second lien that was negotiated between the sponsors and a very few uh, group of lenders. Now, because we at Carlisle had the expertise in the business area in TMT in general, uh, and we could write a big check and work very, very quickly, we ended up uh, conducting due diligence very quickly and leading the lender group in this particular transaction, we think on very, very attractive terms. So this is just one example of a company going through a significant transition where we were able to come in and provide a bespoke capital solution. So as we head into 2023, the consumer has remained strong. We want to keep an eye on those trends, but starts off in a good place. Inflation is coming down. We do think that default rates will rise and that this is going to be an opportunity for private credit investment and for people like Carlisle to search out tactically where the best value is in our markets. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Insights from the PM's Desk, and we hope to see you next time.